the nerve axillary artery is divided into three different parts each part of the artery take note of the branches of each part so yes i know you have read you have studied and you feel prepared for your exams but <laughs> let me disappoint you a little yes you may have this knowledge on your fingertips but if you do not know how to present it to your examiners if you don't know how to present what you know on your exam script your scores will still be showing you 30 percent and 40 percent and 50 percent so it is when you know how to put down your thoughts your knowledge into writing that is what will now increase your chances of getting the 60s and 70s in your exams hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is jemima and today we are going to be talking about how to answer anatomy questions in exam this is one of my highly requested videos so i decided to bring it up today and it's going to be in a series so this week i'm going to talk about how to answer anatomy questions in exam next week i'm going to talk about how to answer physiology questions in exam and the other week i'm going to talk about how to answer medical biochemistry questions in exam so it's it's like a series that could help you have those distinctions help you have those 60s and 70s that you want to have yes i know you want to have this course and that is why you're here so sit tight and yes i need to remind you that every wednesdays and saturdays there is always a new video on this channel on wednesdays i post about my personal life everything that is outside medical school my hair journey my emotional struggles my skincare routine but saturdays are for medical school videos only so if you're a medical student you have a vip treatment on saturdays so if this is the kind of content that you like please tap on that subscribe button and subscribe to my channel let's get on with the video people keep saying that anatomy department is very stingy with their scores yes i know they are stingy with marks and do you know why it's because there is so much that is expected of you to write in so little time they already know that it's almost impossible not that i'm using the word almost so it's not impossible completely it's almost impossible for a student to be able to write everything that's expected of that student within the time frame that they are given i really do not know about your school but in my school you're giving voluminous questions to write in less than two hours if you know so well you will find yourself spending all the time answering the first two questions and the remaining four or five or six questions you would not have the time to attempt any of them so what i advise and what i do is i make sure i attempt every single question giving just the details at least i'll be able to get the minimum requirement to have a 60 percent in that exam so let me give you a general note on how anatomy questions need to be answered first thing i will tell you is that anatomy does not like paragraphs you know all these long letter writings that we do write in secondary school that you write paragraphs upon paragraphs not for anatomy anatomy need headings okay anatomy is all about structure if it's a histology exam you need to write what you are seeing under the microscope if it's a neuro exam or it's a gross anatomy exam you need to write what you can see with your eyes if it's an embryology exam you need to write how that organ is formed how it is developed the step-to-step -step way in which that organ is developed so i am going to start from gross anatomy and neuroanatomy these two courses are similar in a way that if you ask any question on these courses what is required of you is what you can see with your naked eyes so for example if you ask to write about an organ make sure you start with an introduction where is that organ found what is the shape of that organ what is the weight of that organ what is the color of that organ if you can add a note on its embryological origin is it mesodermal is it endodermal is it ectodermal that would help you a lot when you finish writing about that make sure you draw a diagram you cannot answer any question in anatomy without adding a diagram diagram takes at least four percent what am i saying Diagram take, takes at least 40% of whatever max is allotted to that question. So when you finish drawing the diagram, make sure you label it correctly. You finish with that, move on to its relations. What is that organ related to? What are the other structures that are found around that organ? 
anteriorly what is the organ related to posteriorly what is it related to you know medially laterally what are these organs related to and make sure you use anatomical terms don't go and write the liver is found in front of that is not an anatomical term it's you can say the liver lies anterior to or it lies posterior to or it lies medial to all these anatomical terms you need to get used to them medial lateral posterior anterior superficial deep those are anatomical terms that should be on your fingertips when you finish writing about its relations make sure you add a note on its border if that organ has a border like the heart you know organs like heart lung stomach they have borders they have surfaces add a note on those things when you finish writing about its borders its relations go into the general anatomy the general structures that you would find like if you're writing about the lungs you know lungs have fissures it has lobes if, if that structure has lobes you add it like if you're writing about the heart you know the heart has different chambers right and left ventricle right and left atrium you need to add that if you're writing about something like liver you know liver has it has lobes it has anatomical um classification it has a uh, physiological classification you need to add that now when you finish writing about the general anatomical structures that you would see on that organ or in that organ you move on to the blood supply make sure you have the blood you write the blood supply to the organ make sure you write the venous drainage of that organ make sure you write the innervation of that organ make sure you write the lymphatic drainage of that organ and finally top it up with clinical anatomy and if you still have the time add a note on its functional anatomy what's the function of that organ so let me repeat what i've said you start with an introduction after introduction draw a diagram after diagram draw wait, i say draw write about its border its surfaces its relations after that make sure you write about the key anatomical structures that you'd find in that organ when you finish with that make sure you write the blood supply and if you're writing about the blood supply for example you're writing about if you're writing about hepatic artery where is the hepatic artery coming from if you say okay it's coming from the common hepatic artery where is this common hepatic artery coming from okay so it's coming from celiac trunk where is this celiac trunk coming from you know say okay it's coming from abdominal iota that is what i'm trying to say make sure you if if you if you can try it relate the whatever branch if if, the, uh, if you're writing about actually it, you write that oh it's a branch of this for venous drainage too if you're writing about the venous drainage drainage of that organ make sure you say oh it drains into so vein from so vein it drains into so vein make sure you write these little things that give you these little marks Ve um, lymphatic drainage too it drains into so group of lymph nodes okay this group group of lymph nodes where do this group of lymph nodes empty into so if you can trace this lymphatic drainage to the main principal lymphatic drainage of the thorax or of the abdomen or of the pelvis or of whatever region of anatomy that you're writing about, this would help you a whole lot. What is the extent of that organ with regards to the vertebral column? Is it from L this to L that or from T this to T that? You need to know the extent of the organ with relation to the vertebral column. Then make sure you add clinical anatomy also like what if for example you're writing about the liver of your or you're writing about stomach or this what are these diseases that can affect the anatomy of that organ make sure you include it then for functional anatomy what is the function of that organ sorry to interrupt you guys so this video is proudly sponsored by the chidera company it's a company owned by a medical student so i mean so she has proven that as a medical student you can still get involved in business so basically what she does is that she's a content writer and a ghost writer she helps people to write their blogs to their social media content articles ebooks at an agreed rate per word they also design e-flyers youtube thumbnails like this one that you have i have on this video so sponsored by them they also design business cards so if you need any of those services i will leave their link in my description box please check them out then if you are asked to write about a canal like the femoral canal or or a hiatus like the adductor hiatus or a tunnel like the honor tunnel the carpal tunnel or if you're asked to write about a triangle like the femoral triangle in times like that you start from an introduction as usual and in that introduction where is this canal found where is this triangle found if it's a canal or a hiatus what is the shape if it's a tunnel what is the shape is a foramen what is the shape 
make sure you take note of that the next thing you do is to draw a diagram showing its content after drawing the diagram and labeling properly the next thing you do is to write about the content of that canal if, if, it's, if you're writing about a canal you write about the content of the canal and make sure as you're listing this content you list it accordingly if it's from superficial to deep you do so if it's from medial to lateral you do so or if it's for anterior to posterior make sure you don't just write it in a scattered manner arrange it accordingly another thing oh, okay let me not say another thing if you're writing about a triangle like the femoral triangle make sure you write about the borders of that triangle if it's a triangle remember you write about the borders you write about the roof you write about the floor of the triangle so i repeat myself you start from the introduction you move into diagram and labeling you go into the the relations and the the borders you down you now move into the content and then after you've written all of that you go into the clinical anatomy and most clinical anatomy of canals and tunnels and hiatus it has to do with what happens when its contents are compressed if it has a nerve like the median nerve in the carpal tunnel what happens when the the content of that carpal tunnel is compressed and the median nerve is affected what happens that is what you should you are expected to write in a clinical anatomy if you're asked to write about a triangle or a canal or a tunnel or a hiatus or a foramen just name it there are many then if you're asked to write about a muscle or a group of muscles like sit muscles s-i-t-s i mean this is like one is a group of muscles that or they can ask you to write about the anterior compartment of the arm or the posterior comp compartment of the arm or tie or blah 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 blah, blah. You, you know what i'm talking about so anything muscles you've not written anything until you've written about the origin of the muscle the insertion of that muscle when it comes to muscles okay you you can decide to go into introduction but that is not necessary at all okay in case you want to still go into introduction just in the introduction you just write about where the muscle is found or is, if it's a group of muscles where those muscles are found then after that you try to draw it remember i told you anything anatomy is diagrams you cannot do anything as, uh, until you've drawn a diagram except on the question paper take note except it is written in a tabular form if they did not ask you to write in tabular form then diagram is important if there's anything important test make sure you include diagrams so make sure you write the origin of that muzzle insertion of that muzzle what kind of muzzle is it is it by pennant is it unipennant is it multi pennant the orientation of that muscle for example if you're writing about external intercostals you know it's moving medial and anteriorly so you can say anterior medial so you need to know the direction of the muscle fibers where are they moving to are they moving anteriorly are they moving moving medially are they moving laterally are they moving superiorly are they moving inferiorly take note of that when you're writing that you need to write about the innervation of that muscle what nerve innervates the muscle the actions of the muscle very important take note of the action is it for extension is it for flexion is it for abduction is it for adduction it, oh my god there are so many take note of the clinical anatomy what could happen if the structure of that muscle is affected or if the innervation of that muscle is taken away what could happen or if the blood supply of that muscle is taken away what could happen take note of that so i repeat myself the, the introduction where the muscle is found blah, blah 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 you move into the diagram take note of the in the origin the insertion the kind of muscle the orientation of its fibers the innervation of the muscle if you want to include the blood supply of the muscle that's nice the clinical anatomy of that muscle then if it's a group of muscles you're asked to talk about like probably the anterior compartment of the arm or the adductor compartment if you are asked to write stuff like that make sure when you finish writing all these things about the individual muscles you come after all of that and write in your introduction the general function of the and the muscles of the anterior compartment or if, or if they have a general innervation you still include it that oh they are mostly innervated by so 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 nerve take note of that and if you ask to write about a blood vessel axillary artery is one of the most asked <laughs> artery <laughs> take note of the origin of that blood vessel take note of the termination of that blood vessel 
So you start from the origin, like axillary artery. Now we, we, we all know that axillary artery comes as a continuation of subclavian artery. Okay, you can write something like the axillary artery originates as a continuation of the subclavian artery. You write about the origin of that artery, you write about the termination of that artery, but you, we all know that the axillary artery terminates as a brachial artery. Take right how it originates, right how it terminates. You finish writing about that, write about the branches. You know axillary artery is divided into three different parts. Each part of the artery, take note of the branches of each part. Don't go and write it accordingly. Don't go and start writing from second part or you start writing from third part. Start from the first part, list the branches of this first part. Go to the second part, list the branches of the oh actually in fact if you ask to write about a blood vessel take note of that the origin of that blood vessel the termination of that blood vessel the branches of the blood vessel if you if you are still knowledgeable enough those branches take note of the sub branches take note of the branches of those branches of the whatever blood vessels you asked to write about i'm doing tautology now what i'm trying to say is for example you know uh, the subclavian artery the internal thoracic artery is a branch of, of the subclavian artery if you can still remember the branches of that internal thoracic artery it will it will fetch you more marks add it note take note of the branches of that um, internal thoracic artery take note of how it ends if you can do that that would be very very nice another thing about blood vessels is that you take note of what structures do these blood vessels supply take note of that then we finish with that you go into clinical anatomy then like i've said if it's if you're writing about the anatomy or the gross anatomy of a vein take note of that vein what are its tributaries which other veins drain into that large vein so i repeat myself origin of the blood vessel the termination of the blood vessel the branches of the blood vessel the branches of the branches of the blood vessels what is the function of those blood vessels which organs or which t what tissues do these blood vessels um, supply if it's a vein you write about its tributaries as well and then you wrap it all up with the clinical anatomy of these blood vessels so i completely forgot to add that if you're writing about a blood vessel like an artery or a vein you also need to write about its course the journey that this blood vessel travels from its origin to its termination does it pass in between two muscles does it pass posterior to a muzzle or anterior to a muzzle or posterior to a bone take note of that because the course of this blood vessel carries its own mark so when the course is completely absent from your answer script then you will lose the complete mark for it oh my god guys i'm so sorry when i was editing this video i discovered that it is too long imagine it's over 40 minutes and i had to cut it into different parts so i'm going to upload the part two of this video next week saturday it's just this one is just too long so i cannot upload it completely so by next week saturday i'm going to talk about the rest of the anatomy i'm going to talk about when you're asked to write about a nerve or a plexus or when you're asked to write about a bone or a joint like if you're asked to write about the cranial fossa or a complicated bone or an easy bone like humerus or i'll also talk about the histology the embryology so those are just i i sorry i, I just had to cut short this video it's too long so see you next week saturday remember i upload new videos every wednesdays and saturdays wednesdays are just for everything outside medical school my personal struggles i mean my personal life my emotional struggles my hair journey skincare routine but saturdays are for medical school videos only so see you next week saturday for a part two of this video bye Mwah.